today we are going to study about replication so what replication is so replication is the process in which dna is multiplied and the multiplication of dna will make exactly two identical copies of the parent strand or the original template strand of dna what are the enzymes involved in dna replication and when you see at the number of enzymes involved we will know that dna replication is a highly regulated pathway so let us see the different enzymes the first enzyme is dna polymerase 1 or polymerase 3 dna polymerase 3 is the enzyme which helps in adding bases to the new strand or any strand of dna the next is dna polymerase 1 dna polymerase 1 enzyme is also called the repair enzyme so it will scan the new end strand of dna for mistakes remove the repair base pair and add new bases or the correct bases dna ligase dna ligase is the enzyme that will look for gaps in dna and joins them and they join by forming what is known as the phosphodiester bonds or the sugar phosphate bonds and thus they will ensure that the backbone of dna is continuous the next enzyme is rna polymerase or rna primase so this is the enzyme that will synthesize the rna primer which is needed for the lagging strand of dna so that dna synthesis can be started or made possible in the opposite direction in the lagging strand and the rest of the dna replication will be carried out by dna polymerase 3 from the starting from the rna primer end that leads us to the need for another enzyme rna's h so the rna's h is the enzyme that will remove the rna primers and once they are removed from the lagging strand dna polymerase 3 will add the rest of the bases and fill the gap but we know that dna is a super coiled helical structure so we need dna helicase enzyme which helps in unwinding the dna so that the bases are exposed for replication purpose so when the coiling is unwound you will know it will create a tension because dna g is a big genome and only one part of the dna where the replication is going to happen is going to be unwound so to reduce the tension we need the enzyme dna gyrase or a group of enzyme called topoisomerase which will help in uh, reducing the tension in the unwound dna and once the dna is unwound and the tension is also reduced it is very possible that the helical nature of the dna is such that it will try to rewind immediately so to stop it from rewinding it was bound by certain proteins which are called helix destabilizing proteins so this helix destabilizing proteins will prevent um, dna 
recoiling. So thus, the are, these are the various uh, enzymes that are involved in uh, DNA replication. Next, uh, we will talk about uh, regulation of uh, gene expression at the replication stage. So, regulation of uh, gene expression at the replication stage takes place in two manners. First one is uh, the replication begins at specific points uh, in the genome. These specific sites are called the initiation regions or the origins. Uh, and uh, this is not a random process thus. And this initiation region is bound by, as we saw, a number of enzymes. And this binding of enzymes and the origin region or the initiation region with the replication missionary will result in an initiation complex called the replisome. The next uh, regulation uh, or control at the replication for a gene expression is that in prokaryotes uh, there is only one worry region or a single worry region whereas in eukaryotes uh, the origin region can be either one which is a slow replication process or many and if there are many ori regions then it is a fast replication process besides uh, in eukaryotes uh, the replication is bidirectional that is it happens at both the directions uh, of in the from the origin region so it, the, it will result in formation of a replicon which is called as the replication for happening in both the directions so this is how gene is uh, regulated at the replication level itself so now we know that dna replication is uh, a semi-conservative model so how dna replication is a semi-conservative model this was proved by a series of experiments uh, conducted by misselson and stahl so misselson and stahl what they did is uh, they replicated uh, dna in a uh, uh, medium having N15 or an isotope basis. So this will resulted in uh, heavy DNA and this heavy DNA formed darker bands or heavy bands uh, during centrifugation. Later, they subjected uh, this uh, heavy DNA, N15 uh, uh, band forming DNA to first round of replication. So, the result of the first round of replication resulted in formation of bands which were little above the N15 darker bands and it was well below the region where later N14 bands will be formed. So this uh, inter or median band help them uh, to confirm that uh, there is a mixture of uh, DNA with new and old strands. So this disproved the model which is called uh, conservative model 
where one set of DNA strands is said to be of N14 or N15 because we started with the N15 band forming DNA replication. Then they subjected this to second round of replication. And the second round of replication resulted in forming centrifugation bands that were um, Yen mixture and uh, Yen 14 light bases. And N15 did not form, and the median bands were formed. And there were also another set of bands which showed it to be N14. So these are replication. First round and the second round of replication were conducted with N14 base containing media. So this uh, second round of replication disproved that DNA replication was dispersive model that is it was happening in segments of dna being new and old strands being shared thus they concluded proved that the dna replication is following semi conservative model Next, uh, we will go on to understand what is PCR. PCR is amplification of DNA. So, for amplification of DNA, we need a source of DNA. And this uh, source of uh, DNA are uh, supported with other source of DNA, which are called primers and bases the bases are added as new strand whereas the primers are needed to initiate amplification So beyond this, the PCR is subjected to cycles of temperature regimen or variation so that there will be DNA formation and DNA replication will be stopped so that another round of replication will again happen. So having to perform a PCR for 25 cycles using a 20 milligram source or dna how much copies of dna we will form so to calculate it we will use the formula number of copies of dna form is equal to 2 to the power of n minus 2n into x where n is the number of cycles performed or number of PCR cycles. x is the amount of source DNA. So here we have n to be 25 and x to be 20. So applying it to the formula it is 2 to the power of 25 minus 2 into 25 into 20 which gives the answer 671. 087640 million copies of DNA are formed. 
Thus in uh, today's uh, topic on replication, we saw what replication is. It is multiplication of DNA resulting in two identical copies. We saw what are the enzymes needed for replication. They are DNA polymerase 3, 1, RNA polymerase, pyrase, DNA gyrase, topohyromerase, helix stabilizing with proteins and others. And then for regulation of gene expression, we saw it, uh, it takes place uh, by using two methods. One is the need for an oricide which results in formation of a replisome. And second is the number of oricides, which is one in prokaryotes. One is slow replication in eukaryotes. Many is fast replication in uh, eukaryotes and it also adopts a bidirectional mode which results in formation of replicon. Then we saw how we know that it is a semi-conservative model. It was proved by performing Meselson and Stahl experiment. And then we saw what PCR is. PCR is amplification of DNA and we want to know how many copies of DNA are formed when it runs for 25 PCR cycle using 20 milligram of DNA. We found it is 67108764 copies of DNA. Thank you for attending today's topic and we will see you again in another topic.